Yellowstone, despite its remote location, a giant eruption could put thousands of lives at risk. Remember, you have, you know, maybe 100,000 people per night staying in the Yellowstone Teton system in the summer. This is equivalent to a community of a, of a you know, a modern U.S. city that are compacted into this zone of potential eruption, so the exposure is rather high. At Yellowstone, we may be on the edge of a precipice, and the question is not if it will erupt, but how and when. Nothing you can do about a volcano. If it's going to go off, it's going to go off. And the effects on civilization are going to be drastic. We may not be able to prevent an eruption, but when the molten rock begins to move up toward the surface, will all the scientific data warn us in time? Now, using historical records, scientific models, and the latest in computer technology, you will witness the devastation that follows when the giant volcano of Yellowstone erupts. The force of the Earth's gravity is weaker at Yellowstone due to the hot water and molten rock below the surface. For 70,000 years, the Yellowstone volcano has remained quiet. But sooner or later, its magma chamber will slowly fill with millions of tons of molten rock. Gas pressures will push up toward the surface, bringing the volcano to the breaking point. This is one of the rules of geology. If it happened in the past, it'll happen again in the future. We know there's going to be super eruptions, and probably one at Yellowstone and it's going to have catastrophic effects. Now, using computer models and the latest scientific information, you will experience what would happen if the largest volcano in North America were to erupt. When that eruption occurs, there is no doubt whatsoever that parts of the northwest of the United States will be completely and comprehensively devastated. It'll just be over. It'll be toast. It'll be finished. The first indications of a Yellowstone eruption will be rumblings heard underfoot as dozens of small earthquakes begin. The ground begins to rise from the pressure of the expanding hot waters, gases, and surging magma. The Templars grow in strength, spreading across the entire rim of the caldera. All the tourists have to be cleared from the park. Officials send out warnings to towns within a 100-mile radius, the danger zone of a Yellowstone super eruption. The cities of Bozeman, Montana, and Cody, Wyoming prepare for the worst. Throughout the park, new cracks in the ground release huge geysers, spouting superheated water hundreds of feet into the air. The earthquake shaking itself will create fractures and cracks, allowing more material to come out. The last of the tourists and park personnel must rush to leave the park, trying to reach a safe distance some 100 miles away before the caldera lets go. They may not have enough time. Lava first appears, oozing out of cracks in the surface. Then, steam and ash explode hundreds of feet into the air. But instead of this relieving the pressure, it pushes the volcano over the edge. The magma contains a lot of gas. And if you're able to depressurize the system rapidly, then the magma will lose its gas explosively and you can have a very, very large eruption. From five miles below the surface, molten rock heated to 1,200 degrees bursts into the air. It begins to erupt and you see these flows coming out sideways and uh, there's nowhere to go. Like a hurricane of ash, pyroclastic flows rip along the ground at 100 miles per hour. For those who left the park within the past half hour, their luck has run out. 50 miles away, the 30,000 residents of Bozeman, Montana watch in horror as the plume of ash and rock reaches into the sky. If they know anything about Yellowstone's past, they'll know they have little time before their city is devastated. The pyroclastic flows may go out as far as 50 to 100 miles away from the volcano. 
And so you'd see the pyroclastic flows coming across ridge after ridge after ridge, and then finally hitting where you are. So local, locally, regionally, it, it's absolutely devastating. Everything would be killed. The sky begins to darken as the ash cloud obscures the afternoon sun. The material is going to explode, you know, violently to the surface, and the material's coming out at supersonic velocities. Uh, and the finer materials go 50, 60, 80,000 feet into the atmosphere. Then a second eruption begins on the other side of the caldera, then another. It is no longer a simple volcanic eruption. Like it did hundreds of thousands of years ago, Yellowstone builds into the largest eruption known to man. The giant cauldron of magma spews a million tons of melted rock thousands of feet into the air as several volcanoes continue to erupt. Wave after wave of burning ash and debris destroy everything in their paths. With so little warning, nearly 400,000 people are at risk and it gets worse. The material falls back onto the surface of the earth, and so you get ashes that are very, maybe 10, 20, 30 feet deep around Yellowstone. A brilliant summer afternoon begins to look like a blustery, snowy night. The weight of the falling ash collapses roofs across the states of Wyoming, Idaho, and Utah, killing thousands while a cloud of lighter ash, a thousand times larger than the one produced by Mount St. Helens, drifts eastward with the wind. There's so much ash put into the atmosphere and it gets distributed so globally that it would cause disruption to air traffic, not just near the scene of the eruption, but really globally for a period of time. The ash uh, goes in the jet engine and becomes ceramic and coats the jet engine. And there have been horrifying uh, descriptions of airplanes just losing their power and diving while the pilots try to figure out what to do to start the engines again. Air travel grinds to a halt as the ash cloud reaches the upper atmosphere. And then the deadliest part of the Yellowstone eruption begins. There's lots of ways you can die in a pyroclastic eruption. And one way is to inhale the stuff and inhale these sh sharp uh, pieces of glass. They attack the lungs, they attack the bones, they kill you from the inside. Across the country, masks are supplied to protect people against the ash. But farm animals have no protection. Within weeks, vast numbers of the country's livestock die like the animals that roamed the Nebraska Plains 12 million years before. And volcanic ash covers much of the Midwest's farmland. You can't grow anything in that ash. Fresh volcanic ash is sterile, like Mount St. Helens just after the eruption. And so it wipes out the breadbasket of, of the world, breadbasket of Canada, breadbasket of the United States. And the effects could last for years. Recovery is going to be a long process. So where does food come from in the meantime? I don't know. Millions of people could die from starvation related directly to the ash fall in America's Midwest. Countless more would suffer as the ash cloud drifts across the globe, dramatically changing our climate. It's quite likely that the, the climatic effects would be much worse than humans have experienced in the last couple hundred years. The Toba eruption suggests that ash particles would remain in the atmosphere for six years, radically cooling the planet. It could mean snow in June, frost in August, and the killing off of crops for years to come. Imagine six years without a growing season. What does that mean? I foresee a very difficult period of time when civilization would really be strained at the, at the roots. This would be the most severe condition that human beings uh, have ever met. It may not happen for thousands of years, but one day history will repeat itself. The slumber of the Yellowstone caldera will end, and the planet will face potential catastrophe. Hopefully by then we'll be prepared, but if not, it could be one of nature's greatest mega-disasters.